So here we're looking at an application of the dot product, projections. So in simple terms, I want you to think about the projection of a vector u onto vector v as the shadow that vector u is casting onto vector v. More formally, we say that the projection of a vector u onto vector v measures the amount of vector u that points in the same direction as vector v. And so this is denoted as the projection of vector u onto vector v. So let's think about a graphical interpretation of what this might look like. So let's say here's our initial point, and we can say that this is our vector u, and then somewhere down here is our vector v, and of course these two vectors are intersecting at some angle theta. So let's now go ahead and imagine that there is some light source above that is casting light onto our two vectors. So what happens is that vector u is going to cast a shadow onto vector v. So to appreciate that shadow or that projection, I want you to think from the terminal point of vector u that there is some straight line coming right down until it intersects vector v at a right angle. So the projection of vector u onto vector v is the vector with that same initial point until that straight line. So this vector here is representing the projection of vector u onto vector v. So let's go ahead now and think about this in a more formal sense. So here we go. Here is our formal definition of a projection of vector u onto vector v. So we have that the orthogonal projection of vector u onto vector v, where vector v does not equal the zero vector, is defined as follows. So we have that the projection of vector u onto vector v is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by cosine of theta multiplied by vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v. And I also want you to note that this orthogonal projection may also be computed as follows. And so here we say that the projection of vector u onto vector v is equal to the scalar component of vector u onto vector v multiplied by vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v, which is equivalent to saying that we have vector u dot vector v divided by vector v dotted with itself multiplied by vector v. And this is where the scalar component of vector u is in the direction of vector v. In other words, this is defined as the scalar component of vector u onto vector v, which is equal to the magnitude of vector u times cosine of theta, which we can see from above is equal to the dot product of vector u and vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v. Now, where does all of this come from? So let's go ahead now and explore the derivations of this projection. So here we go, defining and deriving a projection of vector u onto vector v. So I want to begin by breaking this idea down into easy to understand concepts that we're already familiar with. So let's begin by making a little love note here to ourselves that the projection of vector u is simply a projected vector or a vector. So we know that it must have a length and it must have a direction. And we're familiar with both of these concepts from vector arithmetic. So in terms of direction, let's keep in mind that we need the components of vector u in the direction of vector v. Or in other words, we can think of a unit vector 
in the direction of vector v. And we know this. Now, length is simply the magnitude of the projected vector. And again, we are also familiar with this. So let's use these two familiar concepts to help us as we go through deriving the formal definition. So the first thing that we need is the components of vector u in the direction of vector v. So find the components of vector u in the direction of vector v. So in this case, we'll simply go ahead and let vector u be a unit vector in the direction of vector v. And that's it. So here is our direction, a unit vector in the direction of vector v. Now, in addition to this, we need to find a length. So we'll use a little right triangle trig here to help us. So we want to find the length of the projected vector. So let's begin here by thinking about that illustration we looked at right at the beginning. So let's say here is our vector u and here is vector v, and of course they are intersecting at that angle theta. And to find or to define that projection, we think about a straight line coming down from the terminal point of u, intersecting vector v at a right angle. So here is our projection, that projected vector. And we'll call this just vector p now for simplicity. So using this picture, we can create a right triangle. So we'll take this off. Here is our right triangle. And our desired angle, theta. So since the hypotenuse is coming from vector u, we can say that this has a length defined as the magnitude of vector u. And since the base of our triangle here is coming from the projected vector p, we can say that its length is simply the magnitude of vector p. So using a little right triangle trig, we think to ourselves, what trig identity or what trig function has to do with the adjacent side of a right triangle and the hypotenuse side of a right triangle? Cosine. We know, of course, that cosine of theta is defined as adjacent by hypotenuse. So therefore, we can say that cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is defined as the magnitude of vector p, all divided by the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of vector u. And since we're looking for the length of the projected vector, we can solve for the magnitude of vector p. So we have the length of vector p is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by cosine of theta. Hey, we recognize this as the scalar component of vector u in the direction of vector v. Now, let's take this even one step further to, to really appreciate where this formula is coming from. So I want you to recall the geometric definition of our dot product. So we can say that by the geometric definition, And that's the geometric definition of the dot product. We know, of course, that vector u dot vector v is defined as the magnitude of vector u multiplied by the magnitude of vector v multiplied by cosine of theta. And we see similarities here in these two formulas. So let's solve. We can say that this is equivalent to saying that vector u dot vector v 
divided by the magnitude of vector v is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by cosine of theta. So we can make the following conclusions. I'm trying to keep everything so we can see all of these definitions. So we can say that therefore the magnitude of our projected vector is equal to the magnitude of vector u multiplied by cosine of theta, which we now know is equivalent to vector u dot vector v divided by the magnitude of vector v. So we'll use this length and we'll use this direction to define the full projection. So here we go. So giving ourselves plenty of room. So our big conclusion here, confirming the formula for the projection of vector u onto vector v, the projection of vector u onto vector v. Again, we had defined at the beginning as being a length multiplied by direction by definition of a vector. Now we found our length to be the dot product of u and v divided by the magnitude of vector v. And the direction was that unit vector in the direction of vector v. So let's simplify. So we have the dot product, which of course we know is a scalar, so we'll keep that group together. Now if we take the magnitude times the magnitude, that leaves us with the magnitude of vector v squared multiplied by vector v, which is our definition. So this confirms our formal definition as well as completes our derivation of the projection of vector u onto vector v. And we are officially ready now for some examples.